Healing Her Heart by Laura Scott Chapter 3 Larissa's slid behind the wheel of her car, intending to attend Sunday morning church services. However using her right foot to drive proved nearly impossible. After several jerky attempts at driving with her left foot, she let out a frustrated groan, turned off the car, and awkwardly climbed back out from behind the wheel. No way was that going to work. She was more likely to hit something than not. She stared up at the cloudless sky, fighting a wave of helplessness. This stupid ankle was going to ruin her few days off work if she couldn't manage to drive a car. She propped herself against the vehicle, enjoying the cool breeze as she tried to figure out what to do next. Less than one day and she was already heartily sick of being stuck in her apartment. Maybe she could manage to hobble down to Rose's cafe. Josie would keep her company at least for a while. There was nothing the cafe owner liked more than gossip. Larissa. She turned when she heard her name, surprise widening her eyes when she caught sight of Gabe Allen walking toward her. He'd parked his car a few spaces down from hers. Hi, Gabe. She was glad that this time she didn't smell like sweat and was dressed in a flowery skirt and a matching pink, short-sleeved top. She tried not to fidget with her clothing. What are you doing here? I brought over a pair of crutches in case you needed some help getting around. He gazed at her attire and lifted his brow. Are you headed somewhere special? She blushed and wished she could stop this ridiculous reaction to him. I planned on attending church services, but driving is apparently not an option. Had he mentioned crutches? She brightened with the possibility. I bet I could walk to church, though, if you're serious about allowing me to borrow Ho's crutches. Church and then Rose's cafe. Much better than sitting around and staring at the four walls of her apartment. I think it would be better if I drove you to church, Gabe said slowly. Crutch walking isn't easy for long distances. Oh. She was flabbergasted by his willingness to take her to church because she'd never seen him attend services in the past. That's very kind, but I don't want to take you out of your way. It's no problem. Here, lean on me, and we'll get you over to my car. She found it unsettling to realize she was standing close to Gabe with his arm anchored around her waist for the second time in less than 24 hours. She had no idea why God kept sending this man into her path, but for right now, she couldn't think of an excuse not to go along with his offer. Other than the obvious one, that spending time with Gabe wasn't smart. But she breathed a little easier when she was safely seated in the passenger seat of his car. She waited until he slid into the driver's seat before glancing at him. You know, I wouldn't mind if you dropped me off at church and came back in an hour if you don't want to go in with me. Gabe looked past her, over his shoulder as he backed out of the parking space. Is that a polite way of saying I'm not welcome, he asked. No. 
Of course not. She was horrified that he would think that. I guess I just never noticed you attending church services before. A mile bloomed across his features. Isn't it the job of a good Christian to convince us non-goers to attend church and to rediscover our faith? He asked in a teasing tone. At least that's what my sister always tries to do. She relaxed after hearing his sister was a Christian. Yes, you're right about that. I would love for you to come to church, but I can't force you to believe in God. You have to come to that realization on your own. Gabe was silent for a moment. I have to be honest with you. I haven't been to church in well over a year. She wondered what had happened to cause his lapse in faith. And given what he'd just told her, she had no idea why he'd even offered to come with her in the first place. But she didn't want to pry into his personal life by asking. She, better than anyone, understood the need for privacy. Well, I have to tell you that out of all the church services I've attended in my lifetime, Pastor John gives one of the best she said lightly. His down-to-earth and yet always helps remind us what God would want us to do. Maybe I'm being presumptuous, but I think you'll like him. Gabe made an oncommittal noise but didn't say anything more as he pulled up to the parking lot of the church. She struggled to get out of the car, which wasn't easy, but within moments, Gabe was there, helping her. Thanks, she murmured, hoping he wouldn't notice the breathlessness in her tone. Stay there, he told her. I'll get the crutches. He pulled the aluminum crutches out of the back seat and set them next to her. Try these. I set them P for your height based on memory, but I might have the measurements wrong. She took the crutches and propped them beneath her armpits, not surprised to discover they were perfect. They're great. Thanks so much. I broke my foot once, so trust me, I know how you're going through he confided. It's not as easy to crutch walk as it looks. She flashed him smile and made her way over toward the sidewalk leading up to the front door of the church. Gabe stayed right beside her, his hand hovering on the small of her back, as if he was worried she might fall. There weren't many parishioners in attendance as it was the holiday, but those who were there greeted her by name. She didn't know if she should introduce Gabe, and if so, as what? Her friend? A colleague? One of the doctors she worked with. She couldn't bring herself to use any of those options, so she decided not to say anything at all. Gabe was likely regretting his offer to bring her, based on the knowing looks being flashed their way. Did Gabe realize the power of small-town gossip? She could feel her cheeks turning red and ducked her head, hoping no one would notice. She told herself not to worry what anyone else thought. If this was what Gabe needed to bring him back to the church, then the minor discomfort was well worth it. Closing her eyes, she sent up a small prayer. Please, Lord, Show Gabe the way home.
underscore 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 Gabe stood beside Larissa in church, wondering why on earth he'd agreed to this. She'd given him in out, had offered to be dropped off and picked up in an hour or when the service was over. Honestly, that was exactly what he'd considered before she mentioned it. But he hadn't taken the chance to skip out. Instead, here he was, attending church in the first time in over a year. His sister had dragged him o services whenever possible back in Madison, but after moving to Crystal Lake, he hadn't bothered. When Larissa had mentioned that she couldn't force him o believe in God, he'd relaxed his guard. He loved his sister, Kimberly, but she was constantly preaching at him, trying to get him o buy into every one of her beliefs. Instinctively, the more she pushed, the more he'd backed off. He picked up the hymnal and found the opening hymn. One thing he'd rather liked about the church services was the music. It occurred to him how just how much he'd missed it. As the organist began to play, they rose to their feet and began to sing along. His baritone was a bit rusty, but he soon got into the rhythm. He caught Larissa's pleased smile as she joined him in singing along. Her arm lightly brushed his, and he kept his eyes centered on the hymnal, pretending not to notice. Even though he did, the pastor was younger than he'd anticipated. Gabe hadn't expected to enjoy the service, despite Larissa's glowing praise of Pastor John Gorman, but since the theme of the sermon today was forgiveness, he found his attention riveted on the pastor's words. Pastor John paused for a moment and then read, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you our trespasses, Mark 11.25, dot. The passage struck a chord deep within. He'd remained so angry with Rebecca after the way she destroyed his reputation at the University Hospital in Madison. Telling his boss and the hospital leadership that he'd sexually harassed her when, in fact, she was simply upset because he'd broken off their relationship. She'd cost him his job. No matter how much he'd tried to deny her allegations, he knew here was no way to recover from his stigma. It was her word against his, and he'd lost. Big time. Shaking off the past, he focused on the pastor's sermon. According to Pastor John, if he wanted to find peace, he first had to cleanse his soul. And that meant forgiving Rebecca. Could he really do that? He knew he should, but saying and doing were two different things. The organist began the closing hymn before he'd even realized the service was nearly over. And he was even more surprised that he hadn't been watching the clock the way he used to. In fact, he'd enjoyed the service. Thanks for bringing me, Gabe Larissa said softly. That was exactly what I needed this morning. My pleasure, he responded. Don't tell my sister, but I liked it, 
too. She laughed, and the sound reminded him of picnics at the beach. Or maybe that was just the last time he could remember being happy. Odd that he felt more light-hearted and relaxed around Larissa. How would you like to go out on my boat this afternoon, he offered. I know he lake will be busy considering it's the Memorial Day holiday, but we can still have fun. Her blue eyes glowed with excitement and surprise. Oh, I'd love to do that. You have no idea how horrible it is sitting inside the apartment while everyone else is out having a good time. Great. How about we grab some lunch and then head over to my place? Unless you need to go home first for some reason. No, I'm fine. She blushed. And I was thinking of stopping at Rose's Cafe, anyway. Rose's Cafe it is. He was glad she'd agreed to come with him, even though he wasn't exactly sure why he'd brought the idea up in the first place. Nothing had changed. Larissa was still a nurse at Hope County Hospital, and he was still vying for the medical director position. He couldn't afford to get emotionally involved with someone he worked with. Yet he could relate to where she was coming from. Sitting at home alone didn't hold a lot of appeal for him, either. He would just have to make sure that spending the day with Larissa was about being friends and nothing more. Underscore 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 Larissa told herself that being out on Gabe's boat didn't mean anything. Even though Josie had wagged her eyebrows when she'd noticed Larissa and Gabe together. Larissa tipped her face to the sun and tried to calm her racing heart. Maybe this wasn't the best idea she'd ever had. So why had she said yes? The logical answer was that she'd been bored and hadn't wanted to sit around in her apartment. But the real reason was that she liked Gabe. As a person, not just as a physician she worked with. And she hadn't liked a man in a really long time. For the first time, she realized that she'd been running away from her past. As much as she learned to love Crystal Lake, the fact of the matter was that she would have worked anywhere that wasn't Chicago Central. Gabe wasn't Roland. She'd made one bad decision, but did she have to live with that one bad decision forever? Maybe it was time to forgive herself. Wasn't that what Pastor John had suggested? I brought you here to relax, not to be stressed out, Gabe said as he slowed the boat, banking gently around a curve. She hadn't realized that her distress had been so evident and cleared her features. Sorry about that. I guess I was wallowing in the past. You're right that being out on the water like this is very relaxing. You must come out here whenever you have a day off, weather permitting. I don't come out often enough, he admitted. I tend to lose myself in running instead. She grinned. Yes, I know. He was silent for a long moment. 
I've been working hard to let go of the past as well, he finally said. So I understand how tea can creep up on you at the worst time. She lifted a brow, surprised he'd admitted that much. We should be able to let go, right? Considering how ice and peaceful it is here. He nodded as he glanced around. Yeah, nothing like the city, that's for sure. He lifted his brow. It's a bit ironic that we're both relatively new o the area. She remembered her first few weeks here and suppressed a shudder. At least you were a Wisconsinite. She'd heard he'd moved here from Madison. I came from Chicago, and let me tell you, that was a huge hurdle to overcome. He laughed. I can only imagine. She smiled in spite of herself. Thankfully, Julie Crane befriended me, and since she grew pee here, the locals finally stopped treating me like an outsider. Julie was working this weekend or she would have had someone to hang out with. Someone other than Gabe Allen. Not that she was complaining or anything. I bet if we asked around, we'd find more transplant residents than those who were born here, Gabe confided. The thought of people who were born and raised here made her think of poor Annie Hinkle. According to Julie, the Hinkles had been here as long as she had. Her smile faded. You might be right, she agreed. Her cell phone rang, surprising her. She stared at the screen for a moment, tempted to let the call go to voicemail as she didn't recognize the number. Reluctant curiosity compelled her to press the green button to answer. Hello. Larissa? It's me. Annie. The woman was speaking so softly she could barely hear her. A hiver of apprehension rippled down her spine. Annie? What's wrong? Are you okay? There was a loud crash followed by nothing but silence. Annie had hung up. Underscore 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 under